Okay, so as things start to, prog to progress with Kurt and Alan, um, it looks like we, we found an agent and he was going to book us. Uh, our first gig was in Austin, Texas, but the problem was I was still in high school. It was May and I, was I wasn't graduating until the end of May. I think our gig was something somewhere around the middle of May. So everything was okay. So they said, okay, we're, uh, we're, we'll, we'll schedule you till after the, the drummer, which was me, gets out of high school. And that wasn't until August. So it took from May until August until we got our, ne our next gig, which was okay because we're still playing in El Paso, having a good time. And we're rehearsing, learning a lot of new songs a lot of new songs. It seemed like we had over 120 songs um, by the time actually the band came to an end. But anyways, so now the agent calls us and we're going to Omaha, Nebraska for our first, my, actually my first road gig with a band. I'm 18 years old, I'm out of high school, and it looked like things were going to go well. I mean, I was excited, the band was excited, they, they were happy to be back on the road because they had already been on the road for a while. And so we had, it's August and it's real hot. We hadn't got 25 miles out of El Paso when boom, boom, the air conditioner on, on the van brakes. Uh, Kurt had this old uh, Econoline and it had an air conditioning in the ceiling and it just, boom, it just stopped working. So we had to drive all the way from, from El Paso to Omaha, Nebraska in August and it was very, 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 very hot. And so, yeah, that was the first first day on the road, the first first hour on the road. Okay, so <clears throat> on that gig, two interesting, funny things happened. One, it was like the the second night of the gig. Some guy named Norman, he's like retired uh, Air Force guy, because we were playing the Air Force base in Omaha. And Norman, well, he he kind of liked us, you know, and he would buy us drinks on on break. It was like nobody in the bars like during the week, so we would just sit and talk to Norman. And Norman would, would buy us drinks, you know, and the problem with that was, one, I, I, I didn't like to drink, uh, but, but I had a few, and then I realized that, okay, when you drink, you're not at your best. I wasn't, I wasn't drunk or anything, I was just, I just could feel like I wasn't at my best. And I think the, the lesson learned was, from Norman, was that <clears throat> I'm not going to drink ever again when I play, so, so from then on, Whenever somebody you know, would offer a drink, I, I would say, no, I, I can't drink, you know, or, or I don't drink, you know. And later on, this, this actually worked out good because uh, in those days, people loved to buy the band a drink. And once you tell the bar owner or the bartender that, that you don't drink, they'll just send Coke or, or juice up to the stage. So that was Norman buying his drinks all the time. And I said, no way, because I started figuring out how many drinks you're playing five or six nights a week. I said, that's just too many drinks for one week. Plus, if you get in the habit of it and you start buying it, which will be in the next story, if you start buying your drinks at the bar, you're gonna be broke and you're gonna have a damaged liver. Okay, so that was it with Norman. At the same gig later that week, we're playing, and, and I remember that the, the bar was empty. It might've been our first set. Usually in those days, first sets were pretty empty. And, um, some guy, I guess he didn't like what we were playing, you know, the kind of music we were playing. Maybe we were just too laid back. He goes over to the jukebox. Remember, the jukebox was right in front of us, right in front of the stage. He goes over to the jukebox and starts playing music. And it seemed like the jukebox was louder than we were. And all we could hear was the jukebox blaring us right in our face. So I think we let the song play out. And then I think the bass player finally went over and turned the jukebox off. And fortunately, it wasn't no incident because I remember this guy had this just look of disgust on his face when he went over there like, oh, I can't stand this man, what they're playing. So he just put in a quarter and he was going to listen to what he wanted to listen to. So that was the end of that. Then from Omaha, Nebraska, off to Alice, Texas, and the story of the four sad puppies. <laughs>